All right, we're going to talk about the complications of aging. And in the interest of not having super long lectures, I'll probably divide this in um, to two shorter lectures. And considering our patient population in general in physical therapy, we are going to be dealing with some of the complications of aging. And we're all aging period. <laughs> we just are. You start aging from probably before you're born or the minute you're born. Um, and the alternative to aging is dying. So um, aging is clearly the better choice. So let's um, talk about the complications of it. So the learning objectives are to be able to describe the common changes of aging in the body systems, including all these systems, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, nervous system, digestive system, and urinary system. No system escapes the complications of aging. <laughs> we'll just we'll just say that. So senescence, the scientific word for aging, um, and its senescence by definition are the biological processes that lead to aging. Some theorists say that senescence begins prior to birth. So the minute your cells are born, they start to age. So before you're even born, you're aging, which that makes sense if you think about it. Um, there are lots of um, theories as to the cause of aging, and we'll talk about a couple of them. Um, senescence also is, the word senescence is used to refer to the period from the onset of old age to death. So what is old age? <laughs> um, that, that definitions vary and opinions vary and that sort of thing. And for a while, um, for a long time, I would think, I would kind of use my mom as a, reference point, I'd say, well, my mom's not old and she's XX years old, however many. And um, that stopped being useful when she actually did get old. And <laughs> my mom is actually very old. Um, so uh, I can't use her for a reference point anymore. Um, and one of my uh, friends pointed, who's in her 60s, pointed out during the um, COVID pandemic that um, people who say 60 is the new 30, um, didn't mean with regard to disease resistance. <laughs> so that, you know, people, people like to think that they're never going to get old, but it's not true. Sorry. So the aging process, the rate of the aging process and the effects of the aging process vary vastly among individuals. Your appearance may not match your chronological age. Um, you might be 30 and look like you're 60. You might be 60 and look like you're 30 or any combination. Um, the rate of changes in the aging process depend on your genetics. So um, thanks, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa um, or, you know, whatever, um, your lifestyle. So if your lifestyle is... Um, contributing to the look of aging, then you will look older. Your health status, if you have a lot of comorbidities, um, you're probably not going to look as young as the person that doesn't. And your cardiovascular fitness, that's huge. It makes you want to go for a run right now, doesn't it? Or um, whatever your chosen cardio is, um, it's never a bad idea to do that. So tissues age, uh, that's just the way it is. Tissues heal and tissues age. Overall, in general, women live longer than men. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna live longer than a, a comparable man. Um, it just means that in general, statistically in the population, women live longer than men. Um, there is a general reduction in function that occurs throughout the body with aging. The most vulnerable tissues are those that cannot regenerate effectively. So central nervous system tissues, skeletal muscle, although this lady is working those dumbbells to help reduce the, the degeneration of her skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, pretty important, and kidneys, we know we can't live without them. So um, a lot of the um, vulnerable tissues that can't regenerate are more affected by aging than other things. So we'll talk about specific systems in a little bit. Lots of different theories of aging. You know, why can't we live forever, right? Who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. 
Um, some one theory is that aging is genetically programmed. So like the um, apoptosis or apoptosis uh, program cell death, it's built into our genes. It, it tells the cells when it's time for them to die. Um, so some of some theories of aging just say that's it. You just you have your time clock and when it runs out, you're done. Who knows? That might be true. Wear and tear is one of the other theories. Um, as you're um, doing things, living your life, your cells are doing things, living their lives. Um, you get waste accumulate. Um, you get altered proteins, mostly from altered DNA. Um, you get um, lipofusion, which is where cells um burst or dissolve sort of and turn into like fatty tissue um you get degenerative changes in collagen and um also another theory is random errors during cell mitosis so in those cells that are dividing um they have to divide all the time like our skin cells um and random errors our um dna correction uh, mechanisms and everything become less robust as we get older and you get these random errors. And that's another theory of why we age. We That does happen, but whether that's the cause of aging, we don't really know. More theories of aging, latent viruses. So we um, talked about the different viruses that stay latent in your system. Um, some people say that's what causes aging. Um, increased autoimmune reactions. So your body forgets to be able to, forgets how to tell self from non-self. So it starts attacking itself. Um, environmental agents. So just being exposed to environmental agents over and over and over again in your lifetime. The sun, <laughs> you know, uh, air pollution, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, free radicals. That's one, one strong theory on aging is that you're um, exposed to free radicals in the environment. Um, stable molecules are just that are hanging out there. They've got enough electrodes. They're not messing with other molecules. Unstable molecules or free radicals are shooting off electro electrons and um, causing damages to nucleic acids, leading to cancer and other diseases, which are leading causes of death. So that I mean, that's one one theory, and, and you know, not a terrible one, but there it is. And um, so, lots of different reasons why we, lots of different proposals about why we can't live forever. But, um, so we don't live forever <laughs> and things um, change in our body. So some things change and some things stay the same, right? Um, one thing that kind of stays the same is your perception of self. And one time, this is so clear in my mind, this was many years ago, but I was working with an 89 year old man, really interesting guy had led an interesting life and, um, liked to talk about it. <laughs> so that was cool. But he said to me, um, the, he goes, my body, I know my body is 89, but the problem is, is that my brain is 22. And then my 22 year old brain wants my 89 year old body to do stuff that it just can't do anymore. And I think there's a lot to be said in that. And that's a more psychological perception type thing. But when you think of it in terms of brain development, um, I think, you know, our prefrontal cortex starts to really come into its own and we start to develop executive level cognition when we're in our mid to late twenties. And so that seems like a good time when we are really, we've really developed our sense of self and we take that with us into the future right? As we age. So we do think of ourselves as 25. And then you see yourself in the mirror when you're 35, 45, 55, 65, etc. cetera. Um, and you like, wow, who is that old person? Or you see someone you graduated from high school with, that's pretty scary. <laughs> and they're, and they're old. And clearly you're not old. They are, but you're not. Um, so that, that's just a weird, uh, little psychological trick our brain plays. So our our perceptions and our sense of self kind of stay the same. Um, physiologically speaking, um, besides the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, the level of our hormone, our other hormone secretion remains relatively constant. So we don't stop um, secreting other hormones. 
What does change though, is the number of tissue receptors. They, it decreases over time. So even though we have the same level of hormones, the speed of the hormonal response diminishes because we don't have as many receptors. Because of course, the hormone exerts its effort by binding to a receptor. And if there's not a receptor to bind to or there aren't as many, you're gonna have a diminished response and diminished speed of response. Um, so that is interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. We'll talk about the implications in different systems. So um, we said that most of the hormones stay the same except for estrogen and testosterone. So in the reproductive system changes in females as they age, um, one of them is menopause. It's like reverse, um, um, reverse puberty. <laughs> so you go through puberty when you're young and then you reverse it when you're older. Okay, that didn't, that didn't really land, but um, so, the ovaries don't respond to follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone anymore. And so they stop ovulating. Um, they're just like, dude, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> Not going to do it anymore, which, uh, you know, I get it. Um, declining levels of estrogen and um, progesterone. So they're just not being produced. Um, the cessation of the menstrual cycle and hot flashes. If you're lucky, you have them in the winter. <laughs> you can just go outside. <laughs> The, um, you know, nor normal menopause, average age 51 years varies greatly from person to person. So um, if, if available, you can talk to your mother and see um, what she did, but it's going to vary between you and her as well. Um, and mood swings also highly variable. Mood swings, mood swings due to hormonal changes. Some of it is social expectation, maybe. Um, and so, and fatigue and your social expectations change, not just with your hormones, um, not with just with mood swings, but, um, you have different, um, responsibilities and different things as you get older. Some women experience horrible perimenopausal and menopausal, menopausal symptoms that they need to go and get treat bad enough that they want to go get treatment for it. Um, sometimes um, hormone replacement therapy is the treatment, sometimes not. Um, some people have, you know, really icky things, migraines, um, night sweats, all this horrible stuff, but not everybody does. It's hugely variable um, over the population. And um, dyspareneuria or painful sexual intercourse is another um, change that happens a lot with aging. Again, it doesn't happen with everybody, but there is thinning of the vaginal mucosa with the loss of estrogen, loss of elasticity and decreased glandular secretions. Um, so that can lead to um, dyspareunuria. But um, again, a lot of people, if it becomes a problem that they have trouble dealing with, they seek medical help for that. Um, for males, testosterone levels decline gradually over time. Muscle mass decreases in size, testes decrease in size. Sperm production is somewhat reduced. Um, glandular secretions of um, the prostate decrease and uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy or BPH is common. Um, BPH can affect lots of things um, and it can develop into other issues like prostate cancer and things like that. So um, it's not just women who go through um, changes as they get older, men do as well. Um, the changes that women go through are like more publicized, I guess, or I don't know what it is, but um, I always say men are going through menopause. <laughs> That's a made up word, I made it up. Well, I'm sure I didn't make it up, but um, men go through changes as well. It's not just women um, and even though um, men can conceivably conceivably um, father children when they're older, the same um, risks exist for an older father as they do for an older mother or similar risks. So um, changes, they happen as you get older. Um, in the next section, we'll talk about changes to specific body systems.